Hello guys and welcome to The Dentist Show. It is Thursday evening and it's all about tomatoes. We are talking about tomatoes, yes. Nearly every dish that we have contains tomatoes, yeah? Um, and um, I'm so happy to have Dr. Mavis um, on the show again. I've had her like maybe three or four times. I think this might be her fourth time. But she's so amazing and she's so knowledgeable that we had to bring her back on tonight's show. Um, let me just get this world remit out of the way and then talk to you guys. Um, please keep sharing your pages. Let everybody know that we are live. And um, before I do take world remit off the screen, remember that you can join up to 5.7 million people around the continent who are sending money back home to Ghana, to Africa, to, you know, anywhere. Um, but it's the easiest way to send money. It's fast and it's easy. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. We are still in COVID era. Um, I hope you guys are keeping safe. You're wearing your mask. You're doing what you are supposed to be doing and washing your hands um, as well and um, social distancing as much as you can. Here in the UK, shops have started opening um, on Monday. Um, my sister went to um, Westfield, on Monday and she said the queue <laughs> was crazy. Yes, it was crazy. I'm not surprised um, because everybody has been waiting to go out. Um, I want to know where you guys are watching me from. I want to know where you guys are watching me. Hello, Nicholas. Hello, A-Class. Um, Supreme, blind guy, his wife, their life. Um, always one of our constant uh, people that are always watching. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight's show. And um, please do subscribe. Please do share your pages. It's very important that we, you know, we share the love. Knowledge is power. And so everybody must get this knowledge. Now I must um, say a big thank you to people that are supporting us. Um, again, if you haven't got one of your tops, this Ghana top, listen, superwoman top with the Ghana flag in there. I'm wearing the UK one at the moment. There's one for Jamaica, there's one for um, Trinidad and Tobago, whatever country that you are in, okay, um, you can get one of these tops. Um, it's out in Ghana. You can also order it online, um, grab one for a loved one. There's men's version, there's kids version, um, you know, so go out there and grab one. I'll put up his um, website details for you to also go on there. That's the website designertea.com so go on there and um, purchase it's a great guy called Darren um, so you can go and support guys okay and then I must plug my own daughter yes Princess Aria has her hair product her shea butter her um, black soap she's here she's going yeah mommy yeah mommy say it more mommy <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> um, so go out there guys go to ariashearbutter.com and you know purchase a shea butter or two okay a shea butter or two or even a black soap for a loved one um there it there's where's, 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 that's the website so that is it aria shea butter Dot com. It's FDA approved in Ghana. So guys, go out there and purchase, purchase, purchase. Let's support. Um, and then Tubelets, another, I interviewed a seven-year-old girl that has done her own type of toothpaste in, um, in tablet form. You know, our kids don't like to brush their teeth that much. Um, and they've done a tablet form. You put it in your mouth and you can brush away. Um, if you use my token Dental, you get 20% off, guys. So please, please go on there and support this young girl. We're getting a lot of young entrepreneurs out, um, out there. So make sure that you go out there and support. Um, she's only seven years old. She's an entrepreneur. Let's support, okay? Um, and then we have all of those, you know, like I said, we are in COVID times. If you are traveling from the UK to any part of the world, you can get your PCR test. It's one of the cheapest that I found in the UK. Um, go on there and, you know, get your COVID test done before you fly out. Um, the details are on the screen as we speak. So that is that one. And then I have the Guba Careers, the transition, diaspora transition, which is happening next week, Thursday online, where, you know, we have speakers who are going to be talking about 
taking that leap of faith back home to Ghana and settling. Yes, they have settled in Ghana um, and just talk and having a conversation really and, and how you can move back home um, to Ghana as well. So make sure that you um, tune in next week, Thursday um, on YouTube, um, Guba Careers, Facebook, Guba Careers and YouTube is gubaenterprise.tv next week, same time. Um, so please be joining us. Now, before I introduce Doc, the reason why I got Doctor on um, today's show is because I saw this flyer that she sent me. And um, it's about tomato processing and marketing training that she has got um, in, in June, right? So it's the 10th to the 11th of June, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. You can know all you need to know about tomato processing. Um, she wrote an article that I read, guys, even though we make so much tomatoes in Ghana, the farmers lose about 20% of the tomatoes. Guess what, guys? And we still import, I said, $99 million, not Ghana City, dollars of tomatoes from our neighboring country. So guys, listen, wherever you are, I'm going to ask Doc, actually, can we do this virtually as well? What about for people that are in the diaspora that are interested? I'm going to ask them and find out whether we can also pay to attend this and learn about this, because I think it's it's important for us in the diaspora to be able to tap into this and learn about this. But if not, um, how much is going to cost for us to really delve into this? Because it's a big space for us to enter, guys. So make sure that you continue to watch the show because it's a really, really important one. Hello, Nana Ose Tutu. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight's show. So let me invite Dr. Mavis Riku Asari. Hello, Doc. Hi. Hello, Denta. <laughs> Good evening. Nice to say. Hey, yo. Namaste. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. I am good. Doc, mm -hmm. tonight, you know, I mean, I think we've, had, we've yeah. you know, we've spoken on our show um, a few times um, about agriculture, um, mm -hmm. about those as well. We've delved in on that. Um, but really, you know, you are a, a food scientist, okay, and a food mm -hmm. safety consultant. Please uh, break it down for us. <laughs> for those that might not know who a food scientist is, if you can just get down what your role is, what you do, um, and we will go on with the show. Okay, thank you, Denta. Thank you for having me once again. Uh, it's always a pleasure because your program is, is such a, a wonderful platform to connect you know, uh, and to share ideas and to really market Ghana. And I really must commend you. Nobody does it best like you, Denta. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope you accept this compliment and know that you're doing very well for Mother Ghana. Um, it's not easy for a woman, you know, to do what you're doing. So thank you uh, for your service, really. <laughs> yes. yes. So who is a food scientist or what do I do? Um, so basically, uh, food science, I think I've shared it before on your program, I went back to what and I said, mm, I was a bit too technical, you know. <laughs> so there is bubble terms. Um, food, what my job is about is just looking at how to modify food um, in different ways that would help it last a bit longer on the shelf. Um, it also has to do with um, improving the quality of food, um, assessment of um, consumer and sensory assessment of food. So it's a lot more to do with the science of food. Okay, there's the art of food and there's the science of food. Um, as a food scientist or a food safety consultant, um, I, I do conduct research. Uh, I work with Ghana Atomic Energy Commission with um, Binari, which is a biotechnology and nuclear agriculture research institute. So it's an ag uh, institution where we look at the use of, of um, the safe use of nuclear to um, improve agricultural productivity. 
So everything to do with food product development, uh, food preservation, food processing, food storage, you know, all that science, uh, you know, behind food. Um, yes, I, I, I do. Um, uh, that's how I work, you know, around food and all of that. So I hope it's simple enough, but we'll delve yes. into it a bit more. In, in the absolutely, absolutely, we will. Thank you so much. Now, when we talk about food safety, um, one of the I'll say issues, yeah, maybe one of the issues that people um, talk about is, you know, Ghanaian vegetables. Is it really safe? Are we using clean water? Um, you know, people mm -hmm. are really worried about the safety of us producing, you know, some of these vegetables. Um, is it a cause for concern? Um, yes, it is. Um, generally, you are what you eat, you know, as the saying goes. And unfortunately, in this part of the world, um, we are so focused on production, you know, getting enough to eat, that we do not think a lot more about the quality. But we are finding out now that it is better to eat quality food than not to eat at all. Because if you do not eat something that is quality, you know, wholesome, you can get sick, and that is even worse than die. I mean, starving. So. Yes, there's some concerns. I specialize in the fruits and value um, system. So I focus my research on fruits and vegetables, and I have actually carved a niche in, in terms of uh, tomato research. But generally, I'm a specialist when it comes to fruits and vegetables. And my concern mainly is with um, the quality in terms of the use of pesticides, the use of chemicals, and also um, meaning the residue on these fruits and vegetables. And then also the way we handle and the way we market, the way we store and the way we, we, we preserve food in this country. And it's my belief that we need to pay a lot more attention, you know, on, on this. Um, I've done some research that have narrowed down on some um, fruits and vegetables, or, you know, that is available in our local markets, which have revealed that we do have some serious quality challenges with these products and so for me it's always about also educating the public and putting out there what i find when i conduct research um yes okay. all right doc you know you, you you mentioned in your article that i read that even though we are making we are producing a vast amount of tomatoes in ghana um we're still not a we're still importing a lot um, and the farmers are losing a lot. Why is that? What What, what is happening? Um, so in Ghana, we do produce a lot of tomatoes, like you said in your introduction um, speech, that, uh, you know, Ghanaians consume a lot of tomatoes, Not nothing hidden. Um, we, we I, I always say we drink, <laughs> we eat, we, I mean, there's a toss of tomato in almost everything that we eat. And so um, tomato is the most important vegetable or the most highly consumed vegetable in Ghana. Um, and a lot of our food, even though um, tomato is processed in the form of cooking, not eaten um, fresh, apart from maybe um, um, you know, where we just yeah. kind of, yeah. uh, and then maybe salads. Most of the time we, 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 we cook the tomato. Um, that means that we do grow a lot because we need to feed our market since it's a very, I mean, uh, tomato is a very important vegetable for Ghana. Um, yet there seem to be a problem with um, the losses that we're seeing. In fact, it's between 20 to 40 percent losses. So we're producing about 381 tons a year annually. Wow. And this is enough even to help uh, feed into processing of tomato. However, because we are not processing, um, we are losing up to 40% of what we're producing. So really the issue is not about the fact that we are underproducing or we do not have enough to feed ourselves, but it's all, it's a little complicated. You, you, can, you can look at it in different, uh, from different angles. Some may say we are not producing um, the right variety that we need to feed the industry. Some may say um, we're just not 
preserving enough so we're losing so much you know but the bottom line is we are producing enough that we can if we turn our attention to processing and 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 and, uh, and keeping and make sure that it lasts long we could do that so yes we are producing but we are not um we are losing a lot of it so there's always a shortfall uh and that means that we are importing even more fresh tomato from Burkina Faso, up to $99 million per annum. And then we are also importing in the processed form. Um, from between um, 1993 and 2003 alone, um, importa I mean, importation of, of tomato has shot up by over 600%, uh, percent, you know, so we are over 600 percent over 600 percent in fact 638 uh, percent 300 and uh, 628 percent between two, uh, 1993 and 2003 that's 10 years and is mainly in the process form and it's still increasing um so uh, you, you can see that we do have um uh we do we do like to import really tomato uh, paste uh, um, in that form this is where i wanted us to turn our attention to if we're importing that much uh can we look internally to produce it for ourselves so that we don't end up importing so much and then also look at the why are we importing what is so special about the products that we are importing are they much of a, a quality products that we cannot look internally and produce or why are we not able to produce what we are importing? So these are some questions that are lingering on people's minds, and I'm sure we will um, answer them as the, as we go through the program. Okay. Um, so Alan has says, I hope the aim is to avoid chemical preservatives, uh, Roundup tins lined with plastic film, glass, and the best for storage due to its uh, instant nature and recyclable. Are we, is, are we, I mean, when we talk about the canned um, tomatoes, how are we, how are we going to do it for ourselves? Okay, so um, the, the, the type of processing I am proposing is that, okay, let me take us a little back, okay, why am I looking at processing tomato in this form, in the dried form? Um, if you look way back uh, around Independence, where we built um, some factories like the Pualuku, that's a Northern Star um, tomato factory, um, later on in San Juan Cannery and other other um, factories that were built, uh, I think about three of them initially, to help uh, you know process tomato into paste to feed the local market. This was basically why these um, factories were built. And some varieties were were actually um, made available to feed these factories because you need a certain uh, grade of tomatoes to process in that form. And uh, over time, I realized that uh, these factories all folded up. Um, so I just went behind uh, uh, the history. I wanted to understand why um, for a country like ours, we couldn't simply uh, sustain these factories. I realized there were so many issues, okay, from of course, um, not being able to produce enough to feed the factories because really you want to put in an irrigation system so that you can get regular supply of tomato to feed the factories. There were um, cases of um, these factories not even paying the farmers on time. And so farmers would prefer to sell tomatoes to middle women who are very powerful, by the way, um, mm -hmm. the tomato queens. And there were issues about well, lack no, of- no, sorry, um, sorry, Doc, why, why were they so powerful? Well, the tomato queens determine the price of tomatoes here in Ghana. Okay. They are very powerful middle women who um, control the market. Um, so sometimes they determine what uh, kind of price to give to these farmers, leaving them powerless sometimes. So um, that's one issue. I also discovered issues about um, infrastructure, you know, getting um, accessibility to these factories because sometimes they were, you know, tucked away that it was difficult for people to reach them. There were issues about uh, electricity, cost of energy to, um, to, to process the tomato into paste because it requires very high intense energy, usually in the form of electricity to, to feed these factories. 
So I could go on and on and on. The list is really tall. But mm. then I had, I said, okay, so these are some of the challenges. And, and then these factories kept closing, sh shutting, and opening uh, based on which government came into power. It became a political thing. You come in, you save the factory, and then because they did not address some of the issues I've talked about, so, you know, down the lane, it, it, it shuts. And was just leaving farmers in, in, a, in a, a very uh, powerless situation. Okay, so I said to myself, I mean, I'm interested in looking at the tomato value chain and seeing why we're still seeing so much losses. And I had actually jumped on a story where tomato fa uh, farmers were killing themselves, there were um, reported cases of suicide because they couldn't find markets for their products. So I decided to learn a lot more about tomato processing. I looked through all the technologies. I had the opportunity to learn all the technologies that you could use for tomato uh, processing. And I realized really, um, we just needed to focus on what was very convenient for us because we, we it was so capital intensive and it wasn't working. Like I said, the, the, the cunning bit was not working for us as a country. So solar drying came um, on, on the, on the uh, top of the list. And in the northern part of Ghana, people sun dry tomato. So it is not like uh, it's a new thing. Um, they dry during the, the, the bumper season and then they sell it off when it's in, in it's not in season. Okay. In Burkina Faso, actually, what the farmers do is they dry the tomato as well and sell the dried tomatoes in the country. And these are technologies, simple technologies that the farmers themselves were employing. So in the article, you remember the title was put processing in the hands of farmers. Okay, yes. because if it's in the hands of government, they see it as a, 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 a huge technology that it's dependent on the government. And so if anything happens, they are powerless. Yeah. But it is working in countries like Burkina Faso. They are drying at the farm gate and they sell off to people who want to, 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 to use it for you know other products. So then the whole idea of processing dried tomato came to, to mind. And I remember bouncing it off a few people like, oh, in Ghana, oh, what are we going to do with dried tomato? What are we going to dry? You know, <laughs> but you know, dried tomato is a premium product. In the, in the West, you live in the UK, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a delicacy for the rich yeah. and especially sun-dried tomato. And in, in Ghana, what don't we dry? We dry okra, we dry pepper, we dry yeah. fish, yeah. we dry almost everything. It's just that because um, tomato is so high in moisture between 95 to 97% water, um, mm -hmm. we haven't found an optimized way of drying it so well, if not even for sun drying, but you know, solar drying, drying it very well so that you can get a good product. I think that has been the challenge that we haven't been able to jump over. So that's why people don't really think about tomato, uh, dry tomato. But even in uh, processing tomato paste, some processes in the West actually just reconstitute dry tomato powder. So there is um, potential for dried tomato there is potential for tomato powder once you get your products you can then go in to do other products you know we have products like a jollof mix that you could use the powder for we all want to see i know denta is eager to see jollof on the shelf um and tomato powder is a very good ingredient for for this product you can use it for shito you can use it for bouillon cubes, like the Maggi cubes and all of that. And like I said, you can use for tomato puree, for tomato sauce, for tomato uh, paste. So that's where the idea of uh, looking into dried tomato came from. Doc, why has it taken us so long? I feel like in everything, when it comes to <sighs> so many things in Ghana, it, it, it takes us a few years to kind of catch on you know what what is delaying us what, what what are some of the things that are causing these delays um like i said denta we we haven't paid attention to t solutions that we ourselves can come up with to solve this tomato problem you and i know that every year right we talk about oh Tomato, you know, I, I have people sending me messages. I was driving along Kumasi, come and see the tomato rotting on the field. In fact, in, in Northern Ghana, some farmers 
actually leave tomatoes on the farm to rot, you know, rather than rent, yeah, rather than um, paying people to harvest the tomato and not getting a market for it. Because you know, tomato is highly perishable. So if you harvest and within 24 hours, um, 48 hours, you're not getting somebody to buy, you know what happens to the tomato, right? So sometimes if they realize they're not going to get market for it, they leave it on the farm to rot. So now, if you have a simple technology that can dry the, the tomato at the farm gate, and when I say convenient, simple technology, I have worked on different types of solar dryers. I had the opportunity to be at the Agricultural and Biological Engineering in Purdue University, and I worked with so many solar dryers, complex solar dryers, solar dryers that were being patented for people, for countries who could afford, you know, to buy um, expensive solar drying technologies uh, and could be programmed. These solar dryers were so advanced that you could program program it and all of that. And yet I realized, you know what, this may not work in Ghana. If you give a farmer a dryer which even has a solar panel hmm, and the panel um, gets broken down or whatever happens to it, they will tell you they can't use the equipment. If you give a farmer equipment that they cannot even service, it will become what? A white elephant. So. Um, I looked at a simple, I, it's, it's not that what I'm proposing is, a, is rocket science or anything like that. I wanted a very simple, passive dryer that was optimized so much that it could get you the dry product without complicating the technology. You, don't, you know, not that we cannot have a, a, a more advanced dryer, but it's a very simple dryer. It uses hot air direct sunlight which goes through a collector it goes into the drying chamber then it dries the product the product goes the moisture evaporates and you leave it in the sun within three days if um, the weather conditions are good you have your dry product and i had to go through series of research to tell how you can even uh, prepare the sample so that you get maximum um drying efficiency and, and good quality product so the prototype went very well and now we have upscaled it took us a while like you said why has it taken us so long yes i had to dedicate my early career <laughs> to this and I'm, I'm 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 very happy that now we do have uh, a technology that is commercial it's been upscaled it can be transferred for people like you and i to buy and then you know um, make our own products um, going back to the training, we're also looking at different other products that we could um, teach people. Cunning, when I say cunning, very um, simple cunning technology, not the ones that I've talked about, you know, factories producing uh, canned products. We, we have um, a type like a called home cunning, or you can say the pot and pan cunning method, uh, which uses a simple kit. You can do it in your kitchen uh, and then bottle them up. So this is very simple, convenient technologies that we seek to transfer to um, people who are interested. Fantastic. And then, you know, we've seen the, you know, the likes of Italy, Spain, they're producing vast amount of tomatoes and really, really good ones. How do we compete, Doc? How do we compete? So what I'm proposing is not competition. It is not competitive, but I like the word because very soon <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> what I'm proposing is to for us to put processing in our own hands. Okay, let us make it simple for people to make this. You, you, I, I was seeing a uh, Gary technology being simplified by the Chinese. I saw a video where they've come up with a, a simple machine, okay, and they're producing Gary. And then you will sit down and say, why are you taking our Gary from us? They will take it from you because you're spending how many days? Two, three days to make your Gary. You dewater and you leave it there, for, you know, and they have come up with equipment that six hours to have your Gary. So if this kind of uh, idea that you can make it very simple for people to make themselves, and then as we move on, if it, it's, we're able to expand People can take this on. Like I'm saying, let's take it from the bigger corporate corporations or 
factories and bring it into our community. The farmer is empowered to do this. Denta is empowered to do this in her kitchen. If you can buy tomatoes in boxes, you can it yourself. You dry some, you make your own paste, you put it in your freezer. Will you go out there and be looking for a kind of product that you're not even sure about the quality? If you're empowering yourself, you can also say, okay, I want to make a business out of this. And then now Ghanaians have become so entrepreneurial. People are doing things in their kitchen, Denta. People are doing this everywhere. So it is about empowerment and it's about making it so local and so easy that people want to do it themselves. And once this catches on, trust me, we will be able to scale up. And one thing too that I want to say is that when you put um, something in, 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 your, in your, you take control of something, you really want to make sure that you're able to consistently, um, you know, produce and improve on it. So even if you're starting with a technology that you think is very simple and you have the power to actually um, upscale and, 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 you know, make it better. And um, one thing that I've realized, I'll take the cocoa value chain, for instance. Cocoa is made in the hinterlands, right? They grow them, they harvest. Then they process, right? The whole process of fermentation and drying. What happens? People can buy off these cocoa, or let's say they bring it into the cities or the collection points. You and I, let me mention my favorite um, chocolate maker, Moments, Sweet Art. She can buy a bag of cocoa, right? and decides I'm making my chocolate. And look at how small she started, and now it's an international brand. So imagine we have a technology where farmers are taught to do it the right way, like the cocoa farmer, dry it well, good quality. They can begin to make this, and then people can buy it off them, right? People can dry it later. People can even build their own setups on close to farms dry them, it's easier to transport, you bring it to Accra, you send it into your small uh, um, factory and you make whatever you want to make out of it. So this is the kind of model that I am I'm, I'm looking at. And we will start small, I, I know that we will get big, but the most important thing is to start small, feed and empower ourselves, then we wouldn't have the need to bring in and compete with the larger corporations. I hope that answers you. No, it, 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 it answers my question. But I feel like also, mm -hmm. Doc, like you mentioned about the cocoa, we have so many good things in, in Ghana, in Africa. And it's mm -hmm. like, we're not seeing the value, you know. Always there's other people seeing the value and seeing how they, like you said, the Chinese are taking our Gary and thinking, you know, they probably want to get the Gary from us, but we're taking too long to do the Gary, so they come out with innovations to 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 get a machine that can do it in six hours. Is it that we don't have the innovative mind to do it? Is it that we don't have the support to do it? Um, because we definitely have what it takes to do it. And so, what is or why is it that we? It's, it's always having to come from the outside um, before we, we learn that we can do it from the inside. That's very true, Denta. Ghanaians love, um, you know, let me say, if you see anything in a chensing or in a tin, right, you think it's a premium product, you know, gone are the days. We are now seeing that we're now moving away from the corned beef and the geishas and the sardines. But before we used to see um, these as what? premium products, right? You see a canned food and you think it's healthier than maybe your momone or your um, dried fish that you are processing in your in your backyard. So we've had the idea that bringing in, so one, yes, we were not processing locally. Like I said, we, we, haven't, been, we haven't been successful at local production of tomato paste. And we used to import from Europe, from, the, uh, from uh, Italy, which is, was one of the the top uh, producers of tomato paste. But guess what? The Chinese are very competitive people and they have come to take the market. So even the Italians and Americans, some are importing from China, passing it through their country. Sometimes they don't even do that. They just label it, made in Italy, and then they know where to send it. And so over the years, the, the kind of products that we thought 
was of good quality. Maybe because you believe Italy produces good quality tomato paste. Now it's a bit compromised. That's the truth. The truth out there is the quality of tomato paste coming from wherever, because we, we can trace it to some countries, is very low because they found out that Ghanaians or Africans, West Africans, in fact, like I said, um, West Africans produce 50%, uh, they consume 50% of uh, tomato in the processed forms. And, and uh, you know, in the whole world, we are the uh, highest consumers of, of, of tomato paste. Of course, Ghana, you know, it's number two. So they realized that it's cheap to bring it in. And tomato paste was, for me, I mean, we have different grades. We have triple concentrate, double concentrate. We were doing around 24% um, um, soluble, natural soluble solids, you know, which meant the tomato itself in the product. And after they found out that, well, they can give us cheaper products um, by reducing the natural uh, uh, soluble solid content to about 7% in the form of the mix. And then they're bringing it to Africa. So it's cheaper for us to get that kind of product. So we are buying and uh, we are consuming and it's increasing their market share. And so for me, it's, it's really also about taking control of what we are getting in this country taking control of the kind of products that are coming into this country. And now they found out that it's even cheaper to bring the bulk product because when you're bringing the finished products, like the canned paste, you, produce, uh, you will pay 30% um, tariffs. But if you're bringing the bulk product, you're paying 10%. So they're bringing the bulk product in the name of, oh, we are establishing factories in Ghana. We are creating jobs. Yes, they would open the factories. You will see some tomatoes going in into the factory initially as though they're producing the paste from local tomatoes. But over time, when they realize it may not be prof that much profitable for them, then they find a backdoor or bring in the bulk product and then packaging for us. You know, so it's, it's, a, it's a problem that we really, I don't know as a country whether we really have the um, whale power to to really um, we know what the issues are but we seem to be okay with it you know the kind of uh, products that are being dumped onto the local market and that is why it's important that we um we find ways that we can also pitch into the market and produce what we want to produce for ourselves making a business out of it a bit there's a good business model that we can we can we can make out of this uh, you know, whole uh, tomato processing um, So, Doc, is it, you know, is it a, a good uh, money-making venture for for us to invest in? Um, people are asking, you know, so how, how is the process like? How do we start? And, you know, for us in the diaspora, we want to know, can we get our money back when we invest? <laughs> um, you know, yes. tell us a bit. Tell us a bit more about the industry and how we should get into it. Okay, so really, the uh, the industry is uh, is is a budding one. Um, people didn't figure out initially how to even process tomato. Um, I have a young uh, farmer. Okay, I know a young farmer uh, who. Uh, produces about a thousand kilos of tomatoes annually. And he came into contact with a crop scientist and decided to, to uh, add value to the tomato because he was also having issues with marketing. So he was taught a simple bottle technology that I'm talking about. And he, it's in the article, Denta, if you, if you, if you read it. And, um, and then he, yes. he, he, he um, used this technology to process the tomato on his farm. In, in, in the bottles and it's now supplying to secondary schools in that region. And so a simple technology that he learned now means that he's maximizing the profits, you know, that initially he wouldn't be able to sell off. Now he himself is processing the tomato and getting value for money. So the technologies that we are proposing are very simple. They are not as capital intensive as cunning technology or tomato paste making that we are used to. 
the factory setup. It is very simple and uh, easy to set up. The initial investment will be in the technologies. There are also other uh, dryers that I'm proposing, dehydrates, which are portable. You can actually move them around. If you want to dry on your farm, you can do that. If you want to bring them home and use, you can do that. So, of course, investing in the initial um, equipment or dryers and then also setting up a simple unit where you can you can um, make it but the most the most um, uh, progressive way of doing this will ha will be to have a linkage or to have a presence within the communities that are growing the tomatoes if you're close to them you can actually set up a, this simple setup we are talking about and then process quickly into dried products and bring it to wherever you, you want to bring it to. It's easier to transport it that way. You don't have problems with fresh tomato getting rotten if the trucks break down and, and all of that because um, fresh tomato is quite uh, difficult to manage in that way. So the model that might be very profitable is to have presence at least for processing from fresh to the dried form in closer to the community so that you can also cut down on the cost of transportation, cut down on the cost of um, losing, you know, spoilage and all of that. So it's very simple and convenient. It is a very promising uh, area depending on on the scale, you know, how, how you want to scale up. But then one thing that I would say is it is also your guarantee, you have a guaranteed market because now people are looking for authentic, natural, healthy tomato products to patronize. Um, I know a lot of people who say that their doctors have told them not to eat tomatoes because of the additives and the things yeah. that we know that people they are adding to all these stuff. We can talk about if people are interested. I, I can walk you through some of the things that pe they do to bring these products into our country. And sometimes they get away with it. We've seen the documentary. We want to know, Doc, we want to know, we want to know. Let's talk okay. about it. <laughs> so, yes, I mean, some of the products are, are substandard. They add a lot of um, additives. They add a lot of starch just to give it bulk. And Ghanaians, we like bulk. So when you see, oh, a thick, it's full of, it might be full of starch maltodextrin or whatever additive that they will add. Of course, color, you can't run away from color. For tomato paste, they are not even supposed to add starch. They're not supposed to add, if you look at the GSA uh, standards, they're not supposed to add uh, artificial color, um, but they're doing it. And sometimes, you know, it takes so long. So they produce these things in their warehouses and store for so long. And then as they store, tomato tends to decolor you know, so it turns brown over time, losing that redness that Ghanaians like. And then they do add uh, titanium dioxide, which is uh, like a chemical for, which has industrial use. And when they do add it, it lightens it up a bit, it bleaches it, and then they add the color. So they keep modifying the product and yeah. they do not declare these um, harmful chemicals and WHO declared titanium dioxide as a carcinogen, um, which uh, when you look at studies that have been done on rats, it, ha it kind of caused inflammation in the guts of rats and of course has carcinogenic effects. And then when they add these things, you know, they do not declare the, them on the label. So when we say that we suspect that products have been adulterated, we really, on the market, we have to cover, we have to test some of these undeclared chemicals before we come out and say, oh, um, we can say for sure that this is not adulterated or this is adulterated. Those are some of the concerns I've had, you know, with regards to these products. But basically, they are heavily uh, adulterated and some do not necessarily declare the, the things that they have added onto, you know, in the product. So we have the opportunity to make wholesome products. And yeah. if you, now people want to, um, tag their products as organic, as natural. If you want to go all natural, um, you can pre-treat the tomato with lemon juice, with vinegar, with food grade um, meta, um, sodium metabisulfite, um, with very simple, um, even salt can be used to pre-treat the, the, the tomato in this process of drying. 
and you have a product that you can position yourself. If you want to position it natural, healthy, and whatever you may want to make out of it, you can. And that also feeds into your brand, you know, of placing the product in a way that you want to you want to position it. So how comes these things are being allowed into the country? It sounds sounds like poison. <laughs> well, and, yeah. um, I I I haven't I don't go, go around. <laughs> I've inspected these products um, in a, that capacity. All I'm saying, like even every other product that is on oh, the we've market, seen it. we've seen it online. We've seen we've seen the documentaries. We've seen you mm -hmm. know the coloring that is put in there. We, we mm -hmm. see it, but you know we we still unfortunately do still eat it, um, <laughs> yeah. um, which is not good. But I, like you said, you know there's been an awakening where people are like, actually, you know, this tin, how long has this tin even been sitting there? You know, mm -hmm. how long was it in that country before it came mm -hmm. into, into Ghana? Um, and so we are we becoming more conscious of these things and we want that change. And I think that that's what you're bringing to the table now um, is that change, a change that, you know, we can do these things ourselves and make money from, from it um, and also supply the market um, because there is a high demand um, like I said in the beginning, you know, Ghanaians, we use tomatoes for everything. You know, our stews, we have stew every day, you know, contome stew, whatever, soup, everything. Um, there's tomatoes in there. And so a lot of people are asking, um, guys, do send in your questions. I will be going um, 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 through your questions in a moment. Um, so send in your questions that you want to ask. Um, doctor, but one of the things that's coming up is, is that people want to join the the, the training session, but they are people from the diaspora. So how do we go about that, Doc? Okay, so this particular training is the mating edition, what we intend to do. So we have different models on training. We have uh, one, one uh, training that we want to do for farmers within these processing communities. And there's this particular type, which is for um people ordinary people who want to learn about you know tomato processing um so that they do you know process themselves or they want to make a, a commercial uh, entity out of it or a business out of it so um it is unfortunately because of covid we cannot handle large classes so we're trying to organize it in a smaller groups which means that um uh, we looking at how many people that we're registering at the moment, and we may have to repeat it over over time. But this is a really hands-on training where we are imparting the knowledge, we're giving the technical um, background to tomato processing. We'll be treating uh, a topic on the, just looking at the, uh, an overview of tomato processing. What is tomato processing? Um, what does it mean to process tomato minimally or maximally? Um, we'll be looking at uh, the technologies that I've talked about with regards to solar drying. We'll be doing bottle canning of tomato puree, tomato paste, tomato sauce, gravy, whatever tomato product that we'll be making. We're going to do the bottle canning. The bottle is a bit more hygienic. Um, I want to say hygienic is um, the technology for that is is simpler and low cost and of course a lot of people have concerns with tin cunning let me say tin or metal cunning and so we are focusing on bottle cunning cunning is just the technology you can can in a tin or a metal can or in a bottle um, we'll be looking at the quality management systems for tomato processing. So if you want to process tomato as a, for a business, there are certain things that are critical to, to the process. You're now becoming a food processor and a you need a little bit of a technical knowledge on that. So what do I do when I, I bring in my tomato? I wash, I sort, um, I have to check maybe the temperature, I have to check the cut. So those things will take you through those things. Uh, and then branding and marketing your agribusiness. So if you come with the uh, with the notion of wanting to uh, set up an agribusiness out of this, we, we will let you, we would engage with you and let you um, have, a, you know, by the time you leave, you will know how you want to position um, the products so that you get a maximum benefit out of it. If you make tomato powder, what are some of the things that you can use the powder for? We'll tell you the the you know many products that you can you can make out of the powder 
and then also the bottle canning and all of that. Um, it is it is a very packed training, so we're going to have it over two days. Uh, everything is being catered for, being provided, the materials, um, the all everything, um, snacks and lunch. And then you also get a certificate at the end of the training. And this is being organized by my uh, institute, Binari, in collaboration with um, the Organization for uh, Women, Organization of Women in Science for the Developing World, which is OWSD, who have been one of the supporters and fund, fund, funders for, for my research in, in, in this particular area. Oh, so it's from the uh, 10th and uh, 11th of June. Mm -hmm. And yes, it means that those who are out of the country may not be able um, to join physically. So we are also exploring um, uh, ways that we can do this, you know, either online, uh, do the demonstrations and all of that, that people can have a feel of it. But it would have been best if you were in, you know, present. Because <laughs> you're giving people kits, all the kits. But yeah. Know, so the practical hands-on sessions uh, um, during the uh, afternoon sessions, where you would stand and do it yourself, because when you go home and you're making it, I will not be by your side. Yeah. You would demonstrate, but you would do it yourself, and of course you go with the products that you you have done yourself, you know, as a trophy. So yes, we are exploring that. I know that through you, and then also other people have contacted me about this. And so then, Tal, we would be working with you to also see how best, yeah, um, yeah, we can we can work with your your no, colleagues. No, I think I think there's a lot of people on here that are interested, and a lot of people have messaged me as well. So I think that we need to probably partner up and do one online. And how we can do it is that people can buy the tomatoes, whatever it is that they need. Um, to do the practical session with you. So we tell you what to buy, what to get, um, right. so that you can go through the process with them. But I think that, right. you know, us in the diaspora don't want to lose out. Um, you know, a lot of people still are still not sure about traveling at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. or, you know, they get their vaccine or, you know, they see the numbers um, dropping down significantly. So I think doing one via Zoom or via this platform, we can you know, we can definitely get people on board um, to do that um, whilst we wait for more people on the ground. But I know that definitely there is a lot of people on the ground that are um, hoping to join um, the, the the training session. Um, I'm going to go... Uh -huh. Can I say this quickly? Uh -huh. Yeah, so also what we're doing it in June was we know that people uh, during the summer, you know, in June they travel sometimes to Ghana. And we'll also mm -hmm. be doing some, you know, closer to December, you know, during the Hamatan when people are likely to come home yeah. for Christmas. But like I said, we will work with you to see whatever f works well for for people. in. Yeah, I think the summer, if, if, if you're going to target us that are coming down for the summer holidays, then it's July because our kids and stuff break up. I think it's around 19th July. So a lot of people bring their families and stuff to Ghana around, you know, um, late July to September. So they go back um, first week in September. And then again, a lot of um, people from the diaspora come again in December. Um, and that's again when the kids break up, if they've got families. But usually from about the 16th, 18th, um, December, they're in town. So we can look at that as well. Um, we always have a lot of numbers um, of people that we know are traveling um, to Ghana, so we can work around that. But yes, people are saying online, yes, online too, please. Um, so we will definitely um, look at that with you, um, Mavis. Um, but it is a great course for you to join, guys. Um, this is something, um, it's an innovation by Doc. Um, I'm going to go through some of your questions now. How does one get on board? So I've put her details, this is her email address and the number to call. Um, I'm going to put it on the platform again, um, but it is on the screen at the moment. So uh, that is that. So, okay, let me see what questions you have for Dr. Yeah, so let me come in quickly. I know I'm working with a group in the northern part of Ghana who are looking at um, processing on the farm. Uh, so they're going to process in the north because, you know, that's where a lot of the tomatoes um, 
the, the the bulgur variety, the Roma, and all of that. So they're processing on the farm and they're bringing the products down south. They're also exploring markets outside Ghana, that's the European Union, because they want to position it as a premium natural dry uh, tomato. So all these are options, not just you you know the final product what what you want to make of it but even the tomato the dried tomato itself mm. if you're looking at breaking into um the international market you just have to make sure that what you have is of a good quality and then you have a way of um moving the products to wherever your final destination is yeah yeah absolutely so somebody i don't know if you can see the question on the screen doc Yes, I can. It says what well, with the open trade, you should connect with the immediate nations, east, west, north, and south of you, and work on contra deals to share resources. I think the Africa free trade on how what you're doing can impact no. that as well. The AFTA. Yeah. yeah. So you know that the AFTA has actually opened up you know, business among African countries. And that's one thing that I also, uh, let me just chip this in. It's true that with that uh, agreement, we can free move it right from, from different countries. And yes, that is also one reason why um, we're seeing a lot more, we're moving uh, tomato from Burkina Faso to Ghana. But I'm of the view that irrespective of this agreement, we still need to protect the, the tomato farmers in Ghana um, because they're losing out. And because of the, the nature of the agreement, um, we're bringing an influx. I mean, you have $99 million worth of tomatoes coming into your country um, whilst you're not able to protect what you have. So yes, we should not put that above the interest of, of the farmers. I am actually advocating for higher tariffs for tomatoes fresh tomatoes coming in from Burkina Faso. I'm advocating for increased tax of um, bulk tomato uh, products that are coming to the country. They should increase it to 30% like the finished goods so that we do not um, cheat farmers because that is how they are, they're finding their way around this, you know. Um, so, yes, we need to watch that way of eating the tariffs of tomatoes that would help protect the local farmers so that we would be forced or uh, let me not use the word force we'll be encouraged to make use of what we have in ghana and let me make one statement sometimes people say oh the uh, burkina faso um, variety of tomato is better than the tomatoes that we have on the market i'm sure Denta, you've heard that a lot it is th it is what it has more solids and all of that yes the variety. We also do have the Roma and the Burkina variety. In God. We even have a Kuma. We have a lot more varieties that also have high, a bit higher solids than others. Um, Burkina Faso, they are using a lot of, of, they depend a lot on irrigation. So they're able to produce tomato, you know, throughout the year. And that's what we should be encouraging for Ghana. It's not that we do not have the varieties here. We are not committed to go, you know, going down that lane as um burkina faso burkina faso is drier than ghana how come they are producing fresh tomatoes and are irrigating their farms whilst we are struggling and for some of the varieties like the woso woso you know the the, the ones with the ridges like the ones you get from akumadan kumasi area which has very high moisture you know compared to the bulgar those ones if not even uh, the best for dry because what I really encourage is to use those other varieties for the drying process. But these ones can be made into puree, tomato puree. You know, not necessarily the concentrated form, which is paste. We can make tomato sauce out of it. So I don't agree that we have uh, what we have on our market is, is of a lower um, uh, quality, you know, than than what we 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 are bringing from Burkina Faso. Okay. Millicent has a comment. Can you read it? Ghana will will be a very rich country if the government invests in agronomy, agriculture, science, and technical schools. 
too much of MBA degrees without anything productive to manage. <laughs> so Millicent, uh, well, I think that now a lot more Ghanaians may have MBAs and all of that, but now people are trying hard to also apply technical, you know, um, people are doing things with their hands, you know, so let's encourage that as well. Um, okay. And then keep China out of, mm -hmm. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Keep China out of Ghana, GH, the skills are within. We can take the market back from the Chinese. We can start. When can we start? <laughs> <laughs> we can start as soon as possible. Well, they will always throw low quality products to Africa. Well, um, if they decide to do that, you also have the power to decide on, on what to do, you know, locally so that you, you, you keep their product out of the country. This is not only a Ghanaian thing, my sisters. It's an African thing because we are facing the same thing in Sierra Leone. Hence the reason why we should stand firm to control. Um, I would like to chip this in. Mm. Uh, we, we import $35 billion worth of food in Africa every year. Oh. This number is uh, expected to increase to 110% by the year 2025, which is just around the corner, right? So yes, I agree with you, it's an African thing. We import so much food from the West, yet we grow a lot more here in Africa. I always say, if the, 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 the West, if, if, if the foreign countries had the kind of rich um, soil and climate that we have in Ghana, oh my God, they would make the best out of it. But, well, it is not only about production, it is also about preserving, because most of the time we put the emphasis on production. Let's produce more, produce more, produce more. If you produce more and you do not find a way of keeping it so it doesn't spoil, of storing it so that you can let it last over time, then you end up importing what the you know other people are, are preserving and bringing to you. So yes, it's an African thing, but we need to empower ourselves with technologies that will help us produce and also preserve and keep it here in our country, as well as export if we like. Fabulous. For the Chinese, it is not connected to culture. Think of the French and, ch and cheese. If Chinese went to France and manufactured Come up, come up it in five hours. Is that am I, I producing? Is that a correct spelling? Come up it in five, in hours. five hours. The French will think would think it's an 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe he should clarify that a bit. Is are yeah. those brand names for products? Okay, hey, Momone. <laughs> Baby, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If the white people had Momonia, they would name it a fancy name and and send it back to us as a premium product. And you we'll know buy. How we have fermented cheese and we will buy. Yeah. We have Momonia and we have decided to make it look like some, a product for a low, you know. So it's just how we position our products sure. and how how we want to market ourselves. My vision really, or my hope, is to walk into um, supermarkets in, in the West, you know, I mean, in America and Europe, and see, I think we do have some products on the market, but you are walking and you are seeing jollof rice, instant jollof rice. Yeah. Gary Foto. I mean, yes. it's not the same kind of rice aroni and all of that. What, what, what? Those are similar to, to, to what, what we, uh, you know, rice aroni is, well, I mean, maybe it doesn't have a tomato or stuff, but these are things that they eat that they've decided to make and call those fancy names for us to buy. Yeah. So, please, I mean, Mamane, how we call it, Denta? <laughs> um, hmm. They will kick it out of the super the, the shop and say, what rotten fish is this? <laughs> <laughs> 
and it's stinky. You know the yeah. stinky. Stuff. No, yeah, it's very strong scent. Yeah, we just have to position it well and be proud of it and it's market true. it. Okay, next one. This is really interesting. I happen to import tomato paste in a certain West African country. I'm really enjoying and learning a lot. Penta, the last time I needed tomato paste, I mm. couldn't find tomato paste apart from salsa here in Ghana. Wow. I, I had to bring tomato paste from Lume. Whoa. Because now what we have is a lot of tomato mix, okay. which is a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a lower version of tomato paste. The mix has 7% natural soluble solids, natural tomato soluble solids, you know. And so I, I had to bring it from Lome. And I'm telling myself, even the tomato paste, which is 24%, which may not be the, 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 the best of the best, mm. now it's, 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 it's what? It's difficult to come by. Because now that we have accepted to, to include... Uh, to make to to uh, how do I put it to encourage mm. the production of this tomato mix product? Why would they have to produce tomato paste if you and people don't even know the difference? You know, and it's cheaper. Yeah, it's much much cheaper than the paste. So I, I had to bring it from somewhere else. Wow, I tomato paste. All the big brands. It's all of a sudden. It's it's it's. Uh, you can't find it. You can't find tomato paste. They're making the mix. Wow. Okay, Angela. Food for them is a commodity. For the native culture, it's, it is more. That is why it might be easier for them to innovate food. It is a mindset. And then Afrijam O. Oh, yes, TJ, we should replicate this in every country on the continent. Let's give the Chinese and Italians a run for their money and at the same time give our African people real tomato produce. I like that, the ending of that. Let's give our African people real tomato produce. Yes. Put it much better. I believe if the people in Ghana, the consumers are well educated, they will understand and adapt to consuming our own processed tomato. I'm trying really hard, but our governments are huge burden and corrupt. I am trying really hard. Every door you knock, they want something. I'm going to link with them. I'm going to link with them. <laughs> I have personally invested in Fen Ghana Offensive North Tomato Project. Okay, um, Alan, tell us a bit more about what your investment was and then what kind of products you're producing. I'll be very much interested in following up on you. So um, Alan says, Alan Bennett, don't look to the government at this point. The government is the distraction. But the government is also what you and I, what's the definition of, oh no, that's, that's democracy actually. So the government, yes, but at the end of the day, we elected them and we also need to do what? hold them accountable, right? Because this is a democratic government that we have voted into power. So government for the people, by the people, Denta, and to the people. It's for the people, people. yes. <laughs> so we are also in some way part, part of part the government. Yeah. And we can do things for ourselves. Like Nana said, we must be what? Citizens and not what? Spectators. Not spectators. Not spectators. So, <laughs> Yes, the, I mean we're all responsible for where we want Ghana. We want Ghana to go. Yeah, Afrijam again, um, Denta. I sent an email today about this course in June in Ghana. As I want to sign up for it, it is. I didn't know it was linked to this presentation. Okay, so thumbs up or something like that, GH. Um, Alan, I have a diploma in hydroponics and therefore interested in opening in Ghana. Um, what is hydroponics, please? Oh, okay. I'm just growing um, some vegetables or fruits or whatever plant medium in water. So I guess that's the question for me. But then we can also talk about this later. I can link you up with people who are also in that space if you want. Fantastic. Alan, should... Uh, 
but using coconut oil as a preservative due to its antimicrobial properties. Yes, so one way of even um, preserving um, dried tomato is keeping it in oil. And I know of this California dried, sun-dried tomato, which is like a delicacy and it's store, it's, it's preserved in olive oil and it's like a premium product. So like I said, th it depends, you know, I keep saying this then, Tyler, that it is how you want to position this product. If you want mm -hmm. to make it a creme de la creme, it's all in your court. It depends on what you want to make out of it. Um, what is the shelf life of this dried tomato? Uh, I have kept samples that I worked on for close to three, four years in my freezer and um, it looks, it still looks good. So right now we are um, doing, uh, we've done shelf life analysis and shelf life studies. One thing that uh, tomato powder is very hygroscopic. And so the packaging material for um, for this product is also very important. If you package it in like a cling film, you, you need to package it in a way that it will not absorb water and then, you know, um, cake and all of that. So all those things have an effect on the storage or the shelf life of tomato. Uh, uh, powder. But for the canned tomato, for instance, you can go as, as, as long as two years with a bottle can product. Um, you can also go beyond six months, beyond one year, depending on what how you're going to, um, what product you're going to incorporate the powder in, and then the packaging that you're going to use, as well as the storage, um, um, met method of storage. Uh, William much Abrifa, how much... Mm -hmm. How much, um, can you clarify, is it the, the cost of the training? The training. Okay, so you can call and then we'll give you all that information. Okay. Um, but it's very subsidized. In fact, one of the people who called said, oh, madam, the way I've explained it, two days, pa, certificate and all this, I'm sure you're talking about some 2,000. I said, oh, my sister, it's way below 2,000. It's, it's even below 1,000, you know, but... Yeah call and we're also offering early bird discount and this is highly subsidized like i said we have some collaborators so you call and then we'll give you um all that information uh now a day this has been very educative i think you should speak to caterers association when they understand they will stop buying the tomato mix so I did some work um, where I did sensory and consumer studies and of the tomato product. And we did what we call the home use test. So I brought in caterers, I brought in um, re uh, people who are in the restaurant space and we gave them um, packed uh, uh, tomato paste, the same size. And we asked them to go and use it for uh, a food, to cook a food uh, product of their choice. And then they came back into the, um, you know, the consumer laboratory after using it. And then we did have a roundtable discussion and we collected data from them. And they, we, the responses were very great. Um, people talked about, so the powder looks very, once you dry it, it looks small. But when you add water, it, it, it swells up. And then you get that red tomato color, which you would you get even without adding we add we didn't add any uh, color or um, colorant and some use it to cook jollof rice gravy soups and they sent they brought the pictures and all of that which um i've, I've written up in in, in in a publication it was amazing the response of these caterers so definitely we are looking into also promoting this product for these uh, people who are the ones cooking because i am sitting here making my own products but guess what, Denta? When I go to the restaurants and the chobas and things like that, you eat what they used to cook for you. So it's also very important that we kind of help the people who are cooking street foods and chobas and all of that to also uh, adopt some of these products, hygienic product, quality products that we want to, you know, promote. Absolutely. Um, Melissa Boaje they have more money in France and it's very expensive. They call it poison sal. Hey, wow. okay, please um, get us some, eh? It's also <laughs> more money. Data, we have to look for a special name for more money in case we, we want to make this a business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Harriet Pierre Anderson, the Chinese have it and it's preserved in oil in a jar. 
and it is very pricey. Yes, um, uh, Harriet is referring to um, solar uh, so sun dried um, tomato kept in oil. Um, yeah. People use for salads and all, and and it comes with a premium price. Um, Willa Sala, the training is very interesting, but will two days be enough to pick all the needed information? Yes, two days is enough. It's more than enough um, because it is not a very complicated um, technology that we are transferring. But the most important thing is to grab the concepts and to appreciate the science and to understand the technical bit which you would very much need if you have to process this for commercial use and of course we'll give you the training manuals that you can refer to if you go back home and then also we are open for any consultation if you want us to come and visit your your, your facility to you know kind of uh, give that um, support after the training we are open for that blind guy his wife their life that's the name. Um, I'm listening quietly, but so intrigued. This is wonderful, especially that it is free of harmful dyes. Abbas Ahmed, you are a courage. You are a courage. Okay, courageous woman. You are a courageous woman, I guess. That's what he wants to say. How many times you fail? I don't know what that means. Yeah. The village doctor say, is asking, uh, is saying that as much as possible, let us encourage our people to eat fresh and less processed tomato. These are more healthy than the heavily processed ones. Absolutely. And so, guys, I would encourage you all um, to subscribe to email to Dr. Mavis. That's the email address on the screen. That's one of the telephone numbers. I'm going to put the flyer back on the screen. Um, so you can take note of the information that is there. Um, so it's a two day starting on the 10th of June, 2021, 8.30 to 4.30 PM. Um, it's at the BNARI, um, Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, Commission. um, in Kwabinya. In, in um, the telephone number is 264 or 0548 um, It's also sponsored by the Impact Food Hub. Um, so the topics and overview, um, overview of tomato processing technologies, solar drying of tomatoes, processing tomato powder, which I'm really excited about, I want to know more about that. Uh, bottle canning of tomato puree and tomato paste, quality management systems of tomato processing, branding and marketing your agribusiness. Um, it's a hands-on training session with experienced food scientists. It's limited um, um, spaces available and you will get certificates at the end of your training session. So, guys, I would encourage all of you to get in involved. Look, I know somebody has just messaged. Somebody has messaged me, Joe, um, and he said, uh, "Let me get his message up." He said, "Interesting topic, Denta. Is there actual money to be made in investing in tomatoes?" And he's got the look sign um, uh, and a tomato sign on the on the text message. Um, and all I can say um, to that effect is what I said at the beginning. We import $99 million worth of tomatoes in Ghana. So imagine what we can earn if we are not getting the importation from them and we are also importing out, okay? Um, um, so there is a lot of money to be made um, in tomatoes. I'll get Dr. to add on anything that she thinks needs to be added on um, with that particular comment. I mean, yes, and not just um, importing the $99 million worth, we're also importing over $2 million, um, you know, worth of uh, $2 million worth of tomato paste. I mean, we're the number two importer of tomato paste in the world. And to think that a country that is consuming so much tomatoes 
why are you importing so much? Be also, be I mean, what is surprising is that you are producing enough to feed yourself. You can process the ones that you're producing to feed yourself, but because you're losing a lot, you know, in terms of post-harvest losses, it is kind of um, preventing you from doing so. So for me, it is all about um, recognizing the potential in this area. It is a, about coming with a mindset that I want to make a business out of this, learning what you need to learn. It will be an exciting time for you to learn. And it will also be a time for you to understand what the, the situation is and what you can do in order to also um, help address it, but also and, and also make money out of this. So it's a great opportunity, and I'm excited um, that we can bring this mating edition. We were talking about this for quite some time now, but COVID, you know, didn't allow us to bring this to you earlier. So we're excited, you know, about yeah. this. And thank you so much, Denta. Yeah, thank for, you so for, much, Dr. Uh, Mavis. <laughs> <laughs> it's really always, 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 you know, I'm always um, trying to encourage our people to invest in Ghana and to look at Ghana because I feel like we don't really need IMF. We don't need none of that. We can generate income in Ghana if we put the right processes in place. You know, the value chain that you keep talking about, Doc, um, is so important. You know, what are we adding to the products that we're getting? You know, yes, we've got pineapples. Are we making pineapple juices to, to, you know, to go out? You know, we've got so many things in 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 our country um, that we really need to look at more um, because it will bring income into the country mm -hmm. and we will get more people, um, you know, investing and patronizing it if they know that the quality is good. You know, um, because like we said, the West have promoted them, branded themselves so well that even if they're selling us something bad, we think it's good because of the beautiful packaging and because they told us so. Um, and so how are we positioning ourselves? And this is something that you are you are trying to, to help. You're trying to bridge that gap. You're trying to close that knowledge, you know, and get our people thinking about tomato and the industry and how huge it is. Um, and so I'm really excited. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in Ghana around that time and I'm hoping that I will join you. Um, I'll probably film it as well and put it out there um, to get more people excited about it and to register more people. Guys, if you are interested um, in the virtual one, you can email Doc and she will definitely let me know. And then we can organize one with uh, my viewers who are interested. I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to learn about the industry um and um thank you all for watching it's been great um yes wellness uh, 41 says is it possible to do a virtual training for remote students even students want to know more about this um is there any website where i can find um the manuals doc is there anywhere or should they just give you a call or email Yes, yes, yeah. The manual comes with the training, so you definitely need the two and the training. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, wellness, you've come back. Yeah, I'm interested in virtual. Yes, don't worry. We will definitely. I organized with um, Doc the virtual one um, that you guys can subscribe to um, to make sure that you know we're not missing anybody out. And um, people that are genuinely interested can come on board. Um, but thank you so, so much. Um, what, did, what did Millicent say? Imagine our some Somunya mangoes, well packaged for export. Mango jam, mango ice cream. Absolutely, absolutely. There's so many things we can do that's just untapped. And that is the beauty of it. Um, the beauty of it is that we are still developing and this creates opportunity. That's why I'm saying that the West is already done. Everything is done in the West, okay? But Ghana, Africa is still fertile, you know? And so it's an opportunity for you to, for you to look at that and, and develop and make your wealth and your riches from Africa. Um, you know, I think it's time that we as Africans, um, black people, Think about home, you know, and um, think about the opportunities before they come because they are going. Unfortunately, um, they are going, and they are they are thinking on their feet, and they're making the businesses. They're employing Ghanaians, and so we should do the same. Um, but guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, you're interested in a virtual one. Thank you so much. We, like I said, do do email doctor 
um, so that she, at least she knows the demand and whether to see whether it's worth it. Um, you can also email myself, deadcastshow at gmail.com, and um, I can see how many people are, are very, very serious. Um, do your payments and we'll set it up um, 100%. Um, but thank you so much uh, for watching. Doc, thank you so much for coming on. I don't know if there's any last few words um, before you go. I just wanted to comment on, I think, one of the comments that came in later, just a few minutes ago, about the mango, the Somenia mangoes. Well, mm -hmm. I'm proud to tell you that um, Hendy's Farms, the two ladies, um, yes. are actually making I met her as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they also had issues about, um, you know, the rejection of their bangles when it, you know, and, and all the, the, the losses that comes with it. And they have stepped up to the plate. They are producing world class mango products. The habanero um, pepper um, sauce. There's the mango marmalade, the mango, um, they have uh, the sobolo, um, what is it called? Um, Bissab. I mean, they add Bissab. <laughs> They have about five products from mangoes. So now, you know, they're adding the adding value to mangoes. And these are the people that we should be encouraging um, to, to also um, help us with the problem that we're facing in the value chains of foods in Ghana. So, yeah, I'm just excited to to um, work with, with what we have. And I'm just uh, waiting that we can have this meeting uh, training going so we see the other prospects that comes with it thank you so much doc for your time i'm sure you're going to be back on especially if we decide to do the virtual we'll do a session where we sign people up um mm -hmm. to encourage them again to sign up to um the training session but thank you so much for always coming on and, and, and enlightening us um giving us that knowledge we've really enjoyed an hour and, and, and a half of of knowledge from you and of, of the industry as well. So thank you so much for joining me. And um, I'll see you soon in Ghana. I'll be at the first session yeah. as well um, okay. to learn and to pass on the knowledge. Um, but like somebody said, it's been a great program um, by, you know, all everybody's really, really enjoyed it. Um, and thank you so much again, Doc. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Guys, it's been an amazing show, right? Um, uh, Doc is, is amazing. She has so much knowledge, Charlie, and we all need to tap into that knowledge. Um, and what she's saying is, right, look, there's so many opportunities for us in Ghana, and why not start with, with tomatoes, you know? Um, like I said, in Ghana, we everything's got tomato in it, you know? And so um, subscribe, sign up. I'm going to put the details up again. Please do email her. Please um, do call her. That is the number. Anything that you want to know, um, contact her. Um, if you're not getting through, please do let me know. But she is going to definitely um, respond. Uh, thank you all for watching once again. Um, again, thank you to World Remit for sponsoring the show as always. You can join up to 5.7 million people sending money back home um, to the continent. Again, these are the details. Let me just put the details of um, the training session. If you are in Ghana or if you know somebody in Ghana that might be interested in the session, I think that it's a great opportunity for you to sponsor somebody, a family member. Um, you know, this could be something that they could start off working um, as. And so, you know, sponsor, sponsor a, family, a family person to be able to go to this training. Um, again, guys, if you are looking for the Superwoman T-shirt, yes, um the ghana one guys go on uh the social media handles of designer t the website is designerT.com. you can order one there's you know there's different countries there's a uk um you can go online and order one as soon as possible again if you're having your covid test you're thinking of having your covid test um you can go to dna they will be able to do your PCR for you. Um, and then Tubelets, guys, this young entrepreneur, she's only seven. I'm going to keep encouraging her um, and keep promoting her. Get her toothpaste tablets. Try it out with your children and see how they like it. Um, Aya Cards is by Christine. She's my boss. Uh, we love Christine so much. She has her own cards, guys. 
with our own images. Um, and so you should go online, um, etsy.com, and purchase one of the cards. Um, again, my daughter, Princess Aria, has her own shea butter. Um, go to areashearbutter.com. You can get a sapo to exfoliate your skin. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can use the black soap as well. Uh, and don't forget, guys, we have Odana Connect, which is coming up very soon. I know I've been promoting this for a very long time, but um, we needed to get the, the right platform for you guys. It's going to be an investment platform um, for all of you that are looking at investment opportunities in Ghana to start off with. That is going to be the platform for you. Um, and then a plug for my sister, Lon Vesta London Beauty, her lip gloss. Um, guys, that's the lip glaze that I use all the time. So go to www.vestalondonbeauty.com and purchase one. And then I keep telling you there's the best shito and best spice ever um, by prodigyfoods.co. Guys, order one. Let me know what you think. It's amazing. It's tasty. It's yummy. Um, you guys are still commenting. Nice program. Thank you so much. Denta will meet you at the maidens. Oh, okay. Oh, Linda, you're saying that you're going to meet me there. Great. In June. That, that, that means you're already sorted. You've registered. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'll definitely be there. Um, but thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to share your pages. Share it with a loved one who might be interested. Um, share it with somebody that you're going to invest in and promote and, you know, get a seat for them at the place. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you all. Please keep safe. It is still COVID. We are still in COVID era and we're praying for anybody that's in hospital right now suffering from COVID. Um, but yeah, I'm excited um, about the future. I'm excited about Ghana. There's loads of opportunities. Now is the time. Good night and God bless you all. Bye-bye.